What's up everybody and welcome back to Peck Pong, channel where I talk about matches that I play, things that I do to try to get better, as well as some information stuff that might help you get better as well. Today we have a match review between uh, me and Andrew Cow. He's a 14 year old who made the national team for the 17 year olds in the United States, so that's, that's pretty good. Um, so yeah, let's just get right into it and talk about what he's doing and what his game strategy is and my game strategy to uh, try to try to win against him. All right, so this is a tournament I recently played in Chicago. It's called the Edge Ball Tournament. And this event that I played, Andrew, is the uh, men's single, so it's the open, open event. Uh, let's talk a little bit about his game strategy. He's a two-wing looper, uh, both sides. He is particularly taking the ball very early, um, so very much a modern player. Um, very strong forehand, very strong backhand. Um, I'd say his forehand is very versatile. It can He can do very strong underspin loops as well as topspin counter loops and stuff like that. His backhand is primarily good at uh, countering the ball. I would say he's not too comfortable with the underspin loops, although he can very easily do them. But it seems like he tries to favor the forehand turnaround a little bit more. Uh, which is another aspect of his game that he likes to use is the forehand turnaround ball on underspin loops and against um, counter loops when I lay up a soft soft loop to his backhand. His serves are primarily the forehand serve. He likes to do a typically forehand underspin and forehand uh, side top um, to the middle of the table or slight, slight forehand or slight backhand. He kind of varies them. Um, and occasionally he'll go long, but most of the time it's that forehand serve. Um, varying between those two spins. For the most part, his game strategy was to have me play backhand backhand with him um, because he, he seems to really enjoy playing against my backhand um, and he can really put a lot of pressure and win a lot of good points that way. And then if I do try to turn with my forehand around the backhand, he likes to run me, run me out wide uh, and then uh, take the, the game to his forehand with me off the table and him close to the table. And most of the time, he just pushed the serve long to my backhand. He knew that my backhand opening was not strong enough or threatening enough to win the point directly. And like I said before, he likes to go backhand, backhand. So he kind of, and he takes the ball early. So it's very hard for me to um, take a forehand turnaround um, because he's just hitting the ball very quickly back in my backhand. And then we go backhand, backhand. As for my strategy, I was trying to do, uh, on his serves, I was trying to mix them up. So the, the three things that I did the most were I tried to cut short, I tried to flip with my backhand um, into his backhand or middle or wide backhand, and then I also sometimes occasionally cut wide to either corner because, um, as I said in other videos, if they like to take forehand the whole table, then you want to cut wide both sides as opposed to hitting cutting to the middle because that might just be their direct forehand. So yeah, I mixed up those three uh, strategies on serve receive and it was kind of nice because like I said before, he only really did those two uh, serve serves. So I knew I could pretty much do any, any variation I wanted to do um, with those two serves. So that makes things a little bit less complicated. Um, so, but yeah, and <clears throat> with my serves, I was trying to do a mix between uh, my forehand serve, just straight under, dead, sometimes long. And like I said before about him cutting most of the time long, is that if I'm doing my backhand serve or like heavy side spin serve with the forehand, when someone cuts that ball to you, it comes in a little bit funny because of the side spin. So in this case, my side spin backhand serve or my reverse pendulum serve were not really helping me because his game strategy was very simple. He was just gonna cut cut deep to my backhand and then uh, hopefully I make the loop on and then he was gonna play rally to the backhand. So for me to do a lot of side spins would only complicate things for myself because his game strategy was yeah that, to just cut long to my backhand. Between the points, I'd say with him and I, they were a lot of swings because the way we're playing, it's a lot of momentum and who has the most uh, courage to play. Uh, good backhands and good forehands and mostly good backhands. But uh, that was kind of how it was going. And in the as the course of the match um, continued, he was winning more of those points than I was. 
Uh, so I had to figure a different strategy out. And that strategy was um, in the fourth game, when I was down two to one, I decided that I was gonna work on my fifth ball attack. So um, that meaning that I was going to serve my normal serve. I knew he was gonna push to my long backhand. I was gonna open with as best of quality I could to his backhand. And then I know that he's gonna go right back to my backhand because that's what he's been doing. And I would just turn with my forehand with the prior knowledge and just take a really strong forehand. And that's a bit of a dicey um, decision to make because, I mean, you're kind of moving beforehand and they, they might be able to see where you're going. But in this case, I felt like it was my only option. Um, so yeah, that's what I was really doing in the fourth game. And for the first five or six points, it really worked out and gave me a nice lead. And it established a, um, a game scenario where he wasn't going to win with the same strategy he was before. So then he started moving into some different strategies. And once we moved out of that backhand backhand kind of strategy line, uh, things started to improve a little bit better for me because, um, yeah, that was his main attack. I think that moving forward, I would want to establish a better backhand down the line because if, if I'm playing this risky strategy of fifth ball attack and it's my only way of winning a point, then I think I'm going to be a little bit in trouble because the opponent might be able to see that I'm going to be doing that and burn me down the line. Um, but yeah, if I can learn to play a good backhand down the line, which you'll see later on, I'm going to do a video about um, uh, a little video at the end of this video, uh, how I'm practice that and the three or four different scenarios which can present that opportunity. But yeah, if I can work on going down the line, that would definitely stop opponents from just pinning me directly into the backhand because um, then you're able to get a forehand or something in play. That's the match. Um, it was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed playing against him. This is kind of like the, the dream setup here is where I you know play topspin topspin with another opponent and a lot of big rallies and stuff. So this match was a lot of fun. Um, I look forward to more matches with him in the future. He's definitely a really good player who I can see just continually getting better. Um, I mean, for 14, he's extremely strong. So that, on, that only lays the way better for him in the future, so. All right, so as promised, the drill that I'm gonna work on for my backhand going down the line and the different kinds of scenarios that these things open up. So here are the drills that I'm gonna work on to open up that down the line and basically feel the different spins to, um, and the different uh, tempos of the ball to get the ball uh, down the line. So. Drill number one is I open up to my opponent, my opponent pushes long, I open, they make a good block, then I use that energy and go down the line. Going down the line can be a little bit tricky if you don't have enough energy on the ball. Um, so you kind of have to borrow a little bit of your opponent's energy. And this usually comes within the first two balls uh, of the rally. Drill number two is I flip, their serve and then they can either block or counter my flip and then I use that energy and I go down the line and the difference between the first one and the second one are the spins you know a flip might have a little more or a little less spin um, depending on your style or technique so just getting used to those two different spins is important drill number three is they flip my serve and then I go directly down the line so using, again, their speed uh, to create more speed and go down the line. This is a technique or a strategy that Hugo or uh, Fen Jindong or Harimoto use a lot, using the opponent's speed against them. It doesn't really come in a day. You may have a little hot streak where it's working for a week or two and then you stop practicing and then it kind of just disappears. I'm a victim of that as well. Um, so yeah, just having a lot of discipline 
and keep practicing it uh, for one or two months. And then, yeah, keep incorporating it in your game, finding it a home in your game so that you continually do it and the skill never gets old. All right, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys in the next one. Great.